Hello everybody. We are starting on the floor today, so I'm just going to show you a little bit of preparation for the yoga class that you might like to try um, at, at your homes with your some uh, aromatherapy oils. Even if you don't have an oil, you can actually do this massage on the face with me just using your facial cream. That can be just enough. So I want you to just get comfortable on the floor. I'm sitting on my toes again. I do this most of the time, so I'm used to it, but it might be too much the whole duration to be here. You can cross your legs to sit like this, and you can support your bum, your knees, anything. And I've got a little bit of white lily here, so I'm just gonna place a little bit on my palm, not so much. And then I can actually rub my hands in front of my face so as I'm doing this all the lovely smell comes through my olfactory organ all through my face and I'm already feeling relaxed then I'm just gonna bring my hands under my chin and rest my chin on my hands here just slowing the time feeling the release and then you can just start using your fingers to rub upwards from the neck and get into the jaw and the chin and use your fingers on the side of your jaws all the way down to the chin you can go up and down and you go under the chin and rub with the thumbs like this and I can turn my neck on one side just rub my side of the neck chest a bit more and I let the other side gently rub the other side of my neck. You might get this tension release to the neck as well so during the class you can relax. And you'll feel this kind of relaxing also mentally preparing you to start your session. Then I'm just going to go on to the sides and the temples just rubbing my temples with my fingers. My eyes are closed really makes me feel much better you don't have to you can open your eyes and watch and do it at the same time you'll still get the same effect so I go on with my temples and rub my temples one way and the other way in a circular motion and I go under my elbows there's a bone and I'm just pressuring with my fingers like this all the while take deep breaths relax your face relax your body and try to become more aware of what it makes you feel to be touching your face and massaging this pressure point. Then we go on to the eyebrows and just go on to the third eye and just go alongside the eyebrows like this. Just small pressure, you don't have to put a lot. And I rub my eye, uh, third eye position here all the way up to the crown. And I'm just gonna have a good scratch on my head. I don't wanna make waste too much time, but I wanna just show you what I do, and this makes my scalp relax. I'm just rub scratching, rubbing up and down through the center first, and then I just go around to the sides and do a little crunch and scratch one way, other way. Doesn't matter what happens, you can go one side, other side, relaxing your neck. Then you comb your hair. Just comb one side. So as you do this combing sensation, your neck turns one direction, you're scratching the neck. And then you turn the other side and do the same thing here. And just calm the mind and the body. And just going on to the shoulders. Have a little moment here. Tap yourself on the shoulder, you're doing so great. And then you can relax and lift the head up and just get the hair. Just gonna go all the way to tie the hair. If you don't have hair, you're a guy. You just have to just hold and massage the scalp like I'm doing like that. Yeah, you see. You can just rub all the way up. Just go scratch like somebody else is massaging your scalp here. But if you have hair, you squeeze the hair and release. So you can 
four screens of the bees. Screens and bees. That can actually give a lot of stimulation through the scalp here. And squeeze and release. If you're a guy, you just keep going massaging up the screens. You can also go under the neck here and relax a bit. Okay? So I'm gonna show you what I do. This is so cool. I pull my head up, my neck is so free. Now I can turn my neck. Don't have hair, just try to feel the arms on the top of the head and elongate your spine. Close your eyes and try to turn. You'll find more mobility in the neck and then go the other side. Good, yeah, I usually do this before a meditation session, but we're gonna just do our practice. This is also good for the practice before the practice. So that your bodies and your minds are becoming one. So now I'm going to start warming my shoulders here. I'm sitting on the toes to do this. So I get my elbow up and then take it out. And elbow up and I take it out. So I'm going to start one side. Inhale. I inhale. Elbow and open. So this is giving my arms mobility to the shoulder and the elbow and the wrist but also I'm turning my spine you see when you turn to the side what happens here and stretch very stretch inhale and exhale one more time here now just stay looking back and see whether you can see your palm so what I do I bring my palm forward so I can see it then I just turn my hand and my head uh, where the far farthest I can get and then I can relax, come back. Now I'm gonna do the other side. So you go elbow to the face and then open, and elbow to the face and open. So when I go, uh, my elbow comes more to the center of the chest, yeah? The more I can keep it to the center, the more I'm gonna feel my shoulder blades and I'm opening here. It's a lovely shoulder work here. <sighs> it's not as easy as it looks, especially if your elbow comes to the front. And exhale, and inhale, and exhale. A couple more times. One more again. You're gonna just go look to your palm wherever you can see the palm, and then you just try to move the palm and move the head and follow it here. Now just go to the front of your feet. If you can't sit like this, just go into a cross-legged position. You can even get your legs like this, and you do it here, okay? So you can go forward and up, inhale and exhale. Let me round the spine, okay? So that's the easy option. If you can't do this one, just do it because it's gonna stretch your ankles, okay? Stretch the spine, relax and round the shoulders. I'm grabbing my knees here and inhale I lift up and look up shoulders back and down and exhale to go inhale and hold it exhale and inhale and exhale shoulders back and down pop your breath if you can one last time up and stay here, relax your shoulders. I want you to feel the arms to your and your neck squeeze up. And look up wherever you can. Make sure you're not hurting your neck. You're not feeling the shoulders lift to the ears here. And let it come back. Good. And then I'm going to go into my chaturangas here. So I'm getting my elbows by my side like this. And then I'm just going to go over my body and just come down to the floor. over, chaturanga, back, and sit back, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale, now I'm going to arch my spine here, then come down towards the floor, and then arch again and go back. You can do more than one breath. Inhale. Then exhale. And inhale. Right? So you don't have to do my breathing 
it, it can be quite much deeper and longer. Just do your best, don't hold your breath. One more time. Shoulders back, baby breaths. I bend my arms here and just rotate my shoulders a little bit. Two more. And just move your body side to side. Go back to neutral and look over your right shoulder. Look over your left shoulder. And look over your right shoulder. And look over your left shoulder. Good. A couple more times. This is such a nice squeeze to the size of the vertebrae. This is lovely. Good. And then I'm going to get my leg away from the camera. Forwards. I expect you to do the same. So whichever direction you're looking, just choose the leg that is away from the camera so that the, the back leg is the nearest to the camera so you can come up here and just find this uh, stretch in the hips but i want you to still explore see whether you can clench your bum find the hips level with each other so in order to balance the hips you want to feel the buttock squeeze and this leg press down so this side is also active so your hips are square okay and then stay here. Then we're gonna try to dig the toes in on the back leg and lift the knee off the floor, but this is harder than it looks. So don't come up if you can't. I hold my hands so that I can feel my stomach and my hips are not twisting. I'm working hard, shoulders back and neck, breathe. Clench your bum, lift the chest. And if you want, you can look up a little bit, but you don't have to move your eyes at all. Now stretch the back leg. Now that you're a bit more relaxed on the legs and your hips are settled, you can join your hands up and look up towards the end. I want you to be careful so you don't lose your balance. If your balance is challenged, keep your eyes ahead. Don't look up, okay? And here we go, couple more breaths. Then we're gonna go stretch, stretch, stretch into this extension on the leg. Find the back leg straight and out. Good. Now, if you bring the back heel down, we're gonna be on the extended warrior here. You're keeping the front foot, pressing down back leg straight, and then you can come onto the extension. Now, I want you to just get that right arm up, left arm open, top arm open rather. So you, I don't know which side you're doing first. So here we go, up and look back. Come up and then look back and see whether you can take that arm behind you and grab the leg. And you can still be on your forearm, your back leg is straight, or you can decide to come to the foot, you can come to a block, whichever way you want. So these are options. So I must show all of them because they're all different. Whatever you decide to do, make sure that back, your top shoulder pulls back and your neck is following it. So you can really look up to the ceiling here on the sides. Breathe. Now I'm grabbing my leg. You can come up a bit higher. This is going to be easy. Then we go extend the back leg towards pointer. You might choose to hold on to the block. You can hold on to your leg, keeping the shoulder up and you're lifting on the floor to help me. This is so much more harder. So if it's not possible at all, please free your arm, okay? So that you can do it with the arms spread out. Breathe deeper and deeper. I point my toe, but you can actually flex it. It doesn't really matter. Then you can slowly come back down onto the lunge. Find the floor, free the arm now. Good, so we're gonna stay here for a little longer. This time you can bring the arms inside of the knee. You can use blocks or no blocks, it's up to you. And I go onto the dragon. So we have done this before, but I'm gonna show you. So I go on the side of my foot and I push up. So in this position, you can feel the shoulders and the chest open, okay? So you want to be open to the chest and looking over and your foot is on the side. If it's too difficult, don't push too deep. So I'm gonna go back to where I was. So you can see the back foot next. So here, you can be on the floor. You don't have to be on the floor. So you can go on the side of the foot on the underneath leg too and lift the knee off the floor. Then you can 
turn it up here. So this is such a stretch in the hips. Shoulders are back, release, rest. Breathe in, breathe out. Try to sink into your own hip, on the down bottom hip, and lift the top knee out further. Good, and then we can calm back. Knee on the floor, hands on the floor. Just flatten the foot by your shoulder and see how far you can go here. And you're pressing out your heel in the front. And that knee try to close up onto your shoulders. You deepen the breath. Now I'm just gonna come up slowly, gently. We lift the front arm. And we can go on the back arm and look open twist here. Shoulders are relaxed, belly brace. Find that front leg again. See how far back you can pull without pushing the hips. You're opening the chest and the shoulders. Then we're gonna come into our lunge again. See whether it's okay to lift here. It's harder than it looks. So use your arms down if you can't lift this way. From here, we're gonna come up to spring pose. So I'm gonna take my socks off at this stage because they're starting to slip. So I don't wanna be slipping my spring pose. So if I show you from this position, then the arm's gonna go up and palms are squeezed. And I look up and arch my neck, okay? So, so you can't see my arms, you know exactly what's happening here. Clench your bum, palm, uh, bum and push the heel onto the inner thigh. If you push your palms and stay here, you can still look up without lifting the arms. But when the gaze changes, you might actually fall off like I did because I'm using my eyes too much. Let's see whether you need to be more steady first before you move the head, okay? And then you can squeeze the palms, squeeze the legs, engage the core, find your third eye, shoulders back and down, keep breathing. Now I separate my arms, the back hand grabs the back foot, and I'm in the dancer's pose here. Only go where you can go, don't force. My hand is in the chin mudra and I can come down to my leg if I want, or I can get to the block. But when you find a block, your body weight kind of shifts to the arms a bit too much. So don't do it. If you're losing your balance, please stay standing, okay? Here we go. So I'm gonna go back there to show you. Breathe in, breathe out. Then I let go and lift this knee and then come out to the squat. Yeah, shoulders back, belly brace. We want to feel the clench in the bum. We want to feel the chest lift up, belly brace. Now you can take the hands behind you, interlace your fingers and pull the chin up. Shoulders pull back, belly pulls in. And then we're gonna lift the and free the arms and turn the other side and bring the knee down, hands down. We're just gonna settle in the first uh, lunge pose. So I'm not too deep here. I'm coming up, finding my hips. Remember all the things we went through? So you're trying to make sure that front foot presses and you find that hip bone to the front foot, engaged and aware of each other. You clutch the bum and the knee and the hips in line and then you're finding the tippy toes engage with the hips here. So you're in control. Then we can push the ball of the foot down and lift the knee up just a tiny bit. This is harder than it looks. If it's not possible, keep it on the floor. And for make sure the front foot is pressing down too. Then we can stretch the back leg. Then we're really opening up. Now you can decide to get the arms up and breathe. Shoulders down. You don't have to look up with the gaze. Make sure your neck is not tense if you decide to go there. Front foot presses. Shoulders pull back and down. We are finding our center. And then just extend your body forward. I separate, separate my arms for this one. And back heel comes in and I'm on the extended for you. Shoulders are back, setting the elbows in. 
and I'm going to pull elbow onto the leg and lengthen the back leg. Now, circle this arm and open and open again and open again. Then we can try to find the back thigh. If you can't do it, then just go wherever you go, okay? And you can help yourself with this arm. Again, you might want to block here or just come down with me. See how you're feeling. I'm going to bring the block on this side. Good. So the blocks are easier because they can actually come up higher. And then you feel that push through the arm that can correct the chest and the shoulders. Okay, breathe in, breathe out. And my gaze to the ceiling here. Now, when we shift the body weight to the side, you will lift the heel off the floor first. Free this arm. Extend this front leg, which is going to be hard to keep it so low. Then you can see how far you can go, whether you're pointing your toes or flexing it. It's up to you. You can find the floor. You can just stay on the leg. You can find a block. Try everything that suits you and choose the one that you, you got. Don't have to keep it so high as me. You can keep the leg down, back body engaged. And then we can come back down, bring your arms into our dragon pose. So I'm going to turn around again to show you that foot. So you're going on the side and open and look over your shoulder. You can be on the floor or the block, wherever you feel like you've got to go. And then I lift my back and knee. You've got to make sure you're not twisting that knee and there's no pressure on it in the knees. So you can find the side of your feet. And open your hips. This hip can drop down a bit more. That's going to increase the hip stretch for you. And then we can bring the foot down, bring the arms down. Just press the heel down. You can go to elbows, you can go to floor. You're trying to get that front knee closer to the shoulder. You might bring your doesn't matter. Breathe in, breathe out. Try to relax. Relax. Hopefully you got these oils. Then as if every time you breathe, it makes you feel more relaxed. More in the zone. More aware of your breath and what it does for your body. Down. You're going to just go arms up here. Remember, you're going with those three pose. Lean to the front leg, stretch the back leg, become aware of what you're about to do, and just see where you can step in. You don't have to step like me, you can just stop and start. Okay? So here we are, palms together again. Shoulders are back and down. You can decide to go up and look up or not. When your eyes move up, You'll be super challenged, so be careful here. Keep the center. You grab the floor with your toes. Clench your buttons. Then we're going to separate the arm and the leg so you can get to grab the back leg. Again, just start with uh, small ones. See how you're feeling here. And then I'm going to clench my bum. Then you see where I can go further down. First my hand is up, then I can try to see where I can go down from. You don't have to do all of this. You might want to rest on the shin, put the shoulders back. Express yourself with your dancer's pose. Then slowly come up again, find your gaze, steady your body. Go out with this leg and then come to squat again. Relax your neck and your shoulders. This is the challenge. It's harder than it looks when you start going into deep extension. So be careful here. You don't have to go as deep as you see. Just find your own. Breathe. Relax. Activate the center. Become aware of the muscles, where they sit on the bones, how you can open your hips more. Inhale, we're going to lift up, and then exhale, we go straight up, turn the toes. 
Now keep looking onto your fingers as you come forwards, forwards, forwards. Stick your bum back and relax your hands under your shoulders. And uh, you can use blocks here if your hands are, can't find the shoulders. So what you can do is open the elbows, relax the neck, and see how far forward you can go ahead. And deepen the breath. Fully upside down, relaxing your shoulders, relaxing your arms. You're in your inversion now, so enjoy this bit. Now inhale, bend your right knee, turn it out, and you go towards the right side into your pregnant pose, Parshvottanasana. I'm keeping my arms down, so I'm in the Inversion still. So keeping the front leg active. So you might not be down with your hands, you might be up here like this, but you try to get the head back. And place your hands, get benefits from the inversion and the compression of the spine using your breath. Let your shoulders open. Now we're going to keep the same side arm beside the foot. So what you do, you turn your foot to the side here, and then you're on the side plank. If you can't do it that way, just simply bring your body down on your hands and knees and go on the side and look up. Shoulders back, breathing deep, breathing out deep. Now you can bring the same leg back. This time as we come down, we are going to pigeon pose. So before you sit, settle in and extend the body, just see how your bum is coming on the floor. So if you can't find it on the floor, you might need to sit on a cushion or a block or bend the back. Then you can come down to relaxing the neck and the shoulders. Deepening the breath, completely relaxing the neck. Gently, kindly, you lift the side arm, go back and again, and go back, try and open that chest. Then we're gonna grab the foot. If you cannot grab the foot, just bend the knee and fall. I do elbow here, you just can grab and turn, that's it. Yes, this feels stretch the shoulder. I can turn here, and I'm gonna stay there. And then I can extend my body wherever it goes. As you notice, I turn into the hand rather than the elbow because it's too intense when I come down. So I'm making it easy for me as I come forward. So you've got to do the step. So the quadriceps stretching, keep breathing, find your maximum here. See how you feel there. Arm up and let go of the back arm, back leg, and front front arm is here on the forearm. Then you're just gonna go up again into the side plank. You can get the feet together or just do what you are doing, it doesn't matter. So you can get the knees down to make it easier also. Then we're gonna come into forearms here. Engaging through the belly, relax the neck and the shoulders. Legs are strong, belly's braced, back of the neck is low. So now press the palms down, go into your fingers, then try to look to your toes and into your fingers and look to your toes. So getting those shoulders to activate a bit more. And hold this one. Now we're just going to try to lift the hips up and hands up with the downward facing dog. Relax, stretch all your hands. The back leg comes forwards again. I want to keep this simple. We go back to the forward fold for a moment. Relax your neck and your shoulders. Hang into your inversion. It's so nice for your back here. Then you can turn your body the other side. 
I'm just going to Paschvatanasana so you're going to relax your head, relax your neck and your shoulder. You have to find your own. If your legs are not happy here, you might have to come up. You might have to separate your feet a little bit more because that way you can start to stay straight leg and get the hamstrings to stretch a little bit. And then you can get the back arm on the floor. You should extend the back leg and then you just can come into your side plank again. Shoulders back, belly rest, keep lifting the hips. Breathing in, breathing out, finding the center, extend the body more and more. And you can come forwards with the pigeon pose. Just settle, take your time. You may see me move so easily and simply, it just doesn't have to be like that. You can just sit, have a moment, adjust, put your hip on the right position, and slowly come down. Just try to surrender all the tension you might have created by using the arms. Relax and sigh, let go all of the need. And we can come up and then circle that arm to prepare to get to grab the foot. And inhale and exhale. I'm going to look back and grab. You might have to sit back a little bit more, okay? And then adjust your body according to your needs. Try to stay here. Open the chest and neck up if you can. You don't have to do what you can't do, but you can decide to go up with the hands. You can lift it. You can hook your hands. We're all different. Just find a position that you're happy to stay. Then I go down. I take my foot with me, if it's possible, just let go of the hand, just let the leg just stay bent like this. But if you can go more, go more, so you get that quadricep stretch, it's so nice. Of the back leg, then forearm comes down. You can get the legs out and you're lifting the feet on top of each other or not. It's up to you. You're keeping the side plank on the forearm this time. Keep lifting the hips. You can turn the head if it feels okay, otherwise, stay looking ahead. Deep breathing. And then we can come on the forearms again. This time we're gonna try to lift the hips a little bit more. Relax the shoulders, look to your knees, see whether you can straighten the legs here. Then you go forward, look to your fingers, and back, look to your knees. Always look, look, look to your fingers, and back, look to your knees. We try to go here. Now see whether you can bend your knees, and now stretch them out. Bend your knees, and stretch them out. And bend your knees. We try to plank here, or you're just doing what you see. I don't expect everyone to be doing this. And then come back down and relax. So I did a crow pose on my forearms, which is quite intense. Don't try it. If you've never done a crow before, on your hands, don't go onto the forearms. But if you practice regularly, you might want to try that one. Now I'm going to rest my arms by my side. Surrender my body. And I'm smelling all that lovely aromatherapy oil on my face. It's making me feel happy. Telling me whether you come up the flow of your spine. Everybody, I hope this was useful for you. Take care.